What's going on YouTube? And we are back and today is the day. We are super excited. We got the uh, history being made right here, right here. So uh, I went and got this off of uh, Godslayer on IG. If you haven't already, check him out, IG. And um, he picked this up at a junkyard in his town and he went ahead and shipped it out to me as well as this. Uh, this is the sport knob. I currently have the limited. So he went and got the whole module because we're gonna do um, a proxy on it. And this steering wheel right here was uh, $25 from the junkyard. This was 10 uh, in total shipping and everything. I sent him about 50 bucks and a little extra for, you know, helping me out and whatnot. Uh, it came with the blue, black chrome, whatever um, pieces there. And I'm gonna take those off and I'm gonna swap on my limited uh, aluminum ones. And I'm gonna show you the process and everything in between. And, uh, I think it's time for me and Jack to get started on the takedown. So buckle up, ride along, witness history with us, guys. All right, guys, so step one, take out that battery and wait about 30 minutes. Uh, that is a must, a or, must do. Or longer, I mean, you, the longer you wait, the better. Yes. Um, at 30 minutes is basically just the minimum. We've had it unhooked for half hour or so now. Yeah. Uh, maybe a little bit longer, but we're not to the point of taking the air back out yet. Yes. Yeah, so. But again, a long time. You do not want the thing blowing up in your face. The, this hole here, and there's a hole on the other side. You're going to need some skinny, long, and strong. Um, whatever that may be. Some guys may know. And you're going to stick it in. And you're going to pry towards the engine. So that direction there on both sides. I'm going to try to get the best footage I can while we're both doing this. Um, of the actual what we're hitting in there. Uh, but I will show you a lot more once we actually get this wheel off. Take this little pick here and I'm gonna try and get up in there. Okay, I can feel it. Right, try prying it that way. Oh, is it coming loose? All right, guys, and once you get the airbag off, you got your pins here. You're just going to pry the orange parts up. Delio's out just a tad bit. And then and then the rest of the thing just pops right off. Yep, and there's three. Three of them. You got to be really careful because once you fuck these up, you fuck them up. Yes. Oh, I should say. Once you mess them up, you mess them up. Yeah, that's all right. You cussed in my YouTube video. That's fine, though. Bam, just like that. Hold on. Let's try to get this fucker out of here. Pull the string with the airbag on. There it is. And in about five seconds, it's going to explode in my face. Oh, well, hopefully it doesn't do that because I don't feel like having clean up blood today. Yeah, it wouldn't be good. That wouldn't be good. All right, so we got a 15 16 and we're gonna, might need a buddy for that one to kind of hold it through and whatnot, but got that. There goes our nut. And then we pull the weight out the back, like that. Yanks it. There it is. There it is. Because there Jesus it is. Done took the wheel. Jesus done took the wheel, literally, mullet and all. And no, my name is not Jesus. No. So let's go back inside and let's see what we have to do. And you guys will not believe how easy it is to actually get that airbag off. All right. So this is what it looks like when it's in the vehicle. Um, the one video that we watched of a lady doing it, it was on a wrecked car. I think it was on a, it was on a 2015 200. She uh, got in here behind it and got that clip right there. And she pried it out like that on either side. And what she did was she had the wheel. So it wasn't like this. It was like that. And it appeared that she didn't have the plastic stuff on the wheel or on the steering column. And it was really easy to get to. But on his, um, that plastic stuff was still there. So you could only see, it was like this much of it was covered. So you could barely see in there. And I couldn't see what I was doing. So we decided to go the route of using the pins, right? But we couldn't see what we were doing on that either. But since this is technically the spare wheel now, we cut an access hole so we could see what we were doing. And essentially, what you do is you take a flathead screwdriver and get into this hole right here. And there's a uh, there's a pin in there that you just push in. And it's only like a quarter inch to a half inch in there. 
Uh, you are gonna wanna have a smaller screwdriver than this, but this is easy to explain. Basically, you just push it in this hole and push down at it like that, and the wheel You gotta push it down. It's difficult to do it one-handed. Yes, it's definitely a challenge. Well, we'll pull it off like this and explain it to you out here. Pull the it. honestly popping it off is so easy. It's hard to do like when it's not mounted because you don't have that force to hold it in place. But when we show you how close and easy it is to actually pop these pins off from the hole. You'll, you'll be in shock. It's very, very easy. So you see the, the, um, the... It's right there, yeah. Oh, they popped out. So you see the, um, the hole right there. This is where I was at right here. And you push this pin in. And Just that, like that. That pin clips on these little, um, ears that stick off on either side. Like that. So you go in from the bottom and you push in right here and it pushes that across like that it's so easy i mean a lot of the videos you see you're gonna think you have to go way up in no it's right as you go in that hole you're gonna need something like a flat head but like a thinness of that but, but something the, that is yeah it's flat on the end not a point because we had a, a pick and we were in there and we must have been yeah. we were you know four or five inches into this thing trying to mess with it and because we didn't know what we were doing at first and no. Once we figured it out, you only have to go like a half inch in there. It was real easy to figure that out. So right there, guys, it's super, super easy. Hopefully you guys don't have to cut a massive access hole like we did. That was for your help. Yeah. And <laughs> fortunately ours. we have an extra wheel. Yes. That we, we don't really care much about this wheel. And now after we showed you that, we're going to show you how to pull these pieces off, swap them over to the new wheel so we can get rid of the black chrome. All right. So like he just said, guys, we're going to be taking these ones, but not these. These are from the wheel I got. I'm going to be taking my stock ones, the aluminum around them. Plus they work really good. There's nothing wrong with them. So I don't really want to mess with possibly these not working or something like that. Um, so he's going to show you the steps you need to do to get all these off and swap them over. Okay. So first we're going to start off by popping that clip out. It shouldn't be that easy, but it was, um, basically you just, it sits in there and you pop that out. You get a, uh, what is this, a T20 Torx. T20. And get in here and pull this screw out, like so. And there's only one screw that holds this back panel in. So you get that off like that, you push it off to the side, and there's one more T, uh, T20 in here. You pull this off. Try to save all your hardware too, because you don't want to be that guy that loses all their stuff because that always sucks mm -hmm. so grab the uh the hardware out that hardware's not going to come out so we're going to leave that like that we got spare stuff anyway um so we flip it over and then i believe this is also a t20 you pull this out and then save that off the side this whole piece pops out. So all you have to do is get in here. And what we did for ease of use, cause it was kind of difficult to get in there to get to the pin. What we did on the other wheel, which we're gonna do right here, right now, is we pulled these two T20s out, which is real easy to get to. You gotta have an extension. We got like a, a three inch long extension on a quarter inch ratchet. So you wanna take that Torx out. You want to pull this one out. And once you get that out, there's a little clip dealio in here that holds all the wiring in place. So you're going to need this to put it all back together so don't lose it or to, and try not to break it. Basically, you just pull this back or push it back a little bit. And then you can reach in here and pry it out. It's real easy to get out. Then all of your wiring for your wheel is real easily accessible. So you just pop that clip right there and then uh, you have this out. If you wanted to take the steering wheel controls and everything off, this is the plug for that. But on that wheel, we're gonna have a little bit more to it because there's not only steering wheel controls on the back, there's also the, uh, the uh, paddle Paddles. shifters. And the heated steering as and well. So. Heated steering, um, but we don't have to remove any of that stuff to get these uh, switch panels out. All right, so 
Um, these buttons work. These are out of uh, his car. Um, but the only issue is they're kind of wearing down. And we have these buttons out of the old wheel, or out of the new wheel, I should say, that are not worn down. And uh, it's just one of those little touches that we want to do to make it look a little nicer. And we have it here, so why not? So we'll, uh, we're going to explain to you how you pull it apart. So what you do is, first you have to get this cover out from around it. And that cover, you take these uh, two T15s out, right here and right here, right? And then once you get these two out, there's one, two, three, three clips. And you pull the clips off, and this is what you get. So if anybody ever wanted to swap out black chrome for the... Uh, um, for this, the brushed aluminum style, that's how easy it is to do it. All right, guys. So, um, we've been out here working for a couple of hours, you know, figuring things out and whatnot. And what we're going to do and what we end up having to do is, so this is the new wheel. What I did is I recycled all the parts. So if you guys are trying to turn your limited into a sport and get the proxy and get the paddles, you do not need to purchase an entire wheel. You'll just need to purchase the actual shifter and like the the module and the shifter module see that's what you have on yours the on the limited without the paddles and basically the only difference is it's got a paddle sticking out of the top of it yeah versus this is um from the factory you'd have this little that's the wrong side but it has a little cover over the top of this yep and if you actually look hard in you can see that there's two two wires that's because there's no paddle so there's nothing there's no paddle needing to be powered when you actually come and get the one with the paddle you're gonna look in there and there's three wires. And the harness coming from your steering wheel will have the three already. So it will work, it will go in, you're just gonna to need to get proxied. So if you're not trying to get the heated functionality and you just want the shifters, way easier, way cheaper. Now, back to the heated functionality. The reason I'm not using this steering wheel is because it's a lot more than just plugging it in and getting a heated wheel. It's not hard per se or too much more, but you are gonna need a, what was the airbag? Um, it's a uh, airbag clock spring. Airbag clock spring, a heated airbag clock spring. Um, they're about 215 bucks. That was the cheapest one I found. And then you're also going to need the um, steering wheel uh, wiring harness, but that you're gonna need the heated one. I found that on um, uh, Chrysler's website for $27. And you're gonna have to run that all the way from your steering wheel column out into wherever it connects in inside your car we we hadn't gotten that far we haven't yeah. figured out where it goes or anything like that because we don't have any of the parts to do any of that yeah that. so that's a later date type of thing uh i will keep this wheel and potentially move into the heated steering um it, later on for sure because i do want it god slayer did pick me that wheel up from his junkyard for 25 bucks so i mean not a bad price if you especially if you just need these you might be able to find these for cheaper but if you can't and you could find the whole wheel assembly more power to you it's uh it doesn't really matter these are held in by two torque screws that you saw earlier uh us unbolting them and it just pulls right through and it connects right up to your stock one and your wheel you had to begin with so we're going to get back to putting this thing together and getting the wheel hooked up and then after it's all hooked up last thing we need is the proxy all right guys so coming back in now i have the steering wheel put back in place I have my weight put in and I just put the nut over it and everything ran through perfectly. It's good to go. Clip these into your airbag, clip these into your airbag and push your airbag back in and then you are good. Make sure all your, if you did switch your things around, make sure it's all, you focus in better there. Make sure it's all connected in before you do this because you probably don't want to take that airbag off again. So that was a pain in the butt. Yeah, it was not fun. So we're going to connect the airbag back together I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll push it in. Just so you guys know, all the airbag connectors are color coded. So there is no messing up. And those two ones there are different sizes. So, yep, just click these back in and then push your pins down and you're good to go. So everything is clipped in now. You got your airbag in place. Just going to push in on it. it is it's all in good to go um yeah so that there's a limited steering wheel chrome all with the paddle shifters so let's hook the battery back up and get the proxy going hey there 
Uh, this is called an OBD Link MX. You get these on Amazon for about $70. Um, this basically lets your car communicate with your phone with an application called Alpha OBD in the case of a Chrysler 200 or any modern Chrysler slash Mopar product. So we plug it into the OBD port down there, set the car to run, go in to the application called Alpha OBD. And is this uh, iPhone too? It is on iPhone as well. Right. So we want to go down here to body computer select your control unit there should only be one for the uf chrysler 200 you hit connect so as you can see it's connected to the body control module here through the obd link you tap on the little picture with the car with the hood open and you scroll down here to where it says proxy alignment this application is 50 dollars. it's on the play store and it's on the app store um, you hit start, it'll go through, it'll tell you exactly what it's going to do, and basically what it, the long and short of it is, the shifter that we have installed, as you can see, it's an S, this car is a limited, so we have to tell the car, hey, you now have an S shifter, so that's what this is going to do. You hit next, it'll write the configuration, and as you can see, it wrote to the BCM and then the ECM. It'll go through all of the modules within the vehicle for, you know, what it may be, security, everything. Just told that it went into the ABS module, so it popped up up there. Now it's writing to the transmission module. And it'll go through and it'll just tell every module in the car, hey, this is what you have now. So that the car knows what it's looking for. Otherwise, you'll have a flashing um, odometer up on the cluster unless you do this and what you're looking for when it's going through is you want to see completed successfully after every one of these lines that it is writing and so far everything is completed successfully entertainment telematic module basically your radio that is in inside of the dashboard completed successfully integrated center stack the radio so the radio knows what it's looking for and as you can see, proxy alignment finished. If there are any failed writes, check the failing units for errors before trying to run the alignment again. Turn key to stop and wait for power latch to complete. Which is basically, you turn it off, you can open and close the door, and then you want to sit inside the car until you hear vents and stuff move up inside of the dashboard. And then your proxy alignment should be complete. Well guys, it was a success. After the proxy, um, everything lined up perfectly and the paddle shifters work like they should. So uh, if you haven't already, check out part two of the actual knob install. And we'll just shift it into sport. And now we are in sport. And just to show you, the paddle shifters do work. And yes, this is 100% a 200 limited i promise you it was at least so we'll take this out real quick i'm one handing it um it's not going to be a real long video just to show you that i can shift up a couple gears and whatnot so it's really responsive like crazy actually uh but we'll shift it up downshift it it definitely shifts gears um just like it should shift it i mean it does its job man it's it's fun i took it out a couple times and really yanked on it and put it to its max um this thing rips like you wouldn't believe now it's honestly kind of scary how freaking hard it rips i don't even grab the ground i'll just real quick do one for you yeah it's it's fucking ridiculous man it is crazy guys it absolutely is a total worth it thing um like darren was saying back there the app and everything um he did all this with the app we didn't have to go to the dealer um he hooked me up did it for free 
and I love it, man. I spent um, a total of 75 bucks for everything. Uh, thanks to God Slayer for sending me out the wheel, which ultimately I didn't end up doing. Um, so I'll give you a little rundown of what actually happened so you understand. Basically, God Slayer sent me out a S wheel with a heated wheel and paddle shifters, which I obviously got the paddle shifters in. The heated wheel uh, didn't work due to me not having um, the proper um, power wire and stuff for the heating. So you'll actually end up having to get two other components. You spend about another $220, you can get the heated steering wheel and proxy it into your radio and make it all function perfectly. But I didn't do that. I went ahead and just did the paddle shifter. So if you guys are not even worried about heating and you just want the actual paddle, just pick yourself up the shifters itself and you can install these. They are fully functional. This is my actual limited wheel, same harness in there and everything. All I did was add the shifters and you can actually pick up the SRT shifters if you want, which is pretty sweet. Those things poke out about this much higher and they just look way more aggressive. Um, but these are great quality, man. Um, if you haven't felt the 200 paddle shifters, they sit really nicely and they feel phenomenal they are really really good i really like it um i like i kept the brushed aluminum just to kind of flow with my entire car as well as the paddle shifters themselves so i really really like the look it gives and um this could not have been funner the actual um s the you know l to s transformation has been amazing guys it's been super fun and i cannot wait to do more and um it's unfortunate the heat steering wheel didn't work but you absolutely can turn your limited to an s with a proxy and a steering wheel paddle shifters it's that easy guys it uh wasn't too hard to do it was kind of a pain to get the airbag out as you've seen earlier but we did it um a couple of steps it's not hard to get the wheel off and it's just definitely worth it guys i hope you hope you hope you enjoyed this video i hope this video will bring you ideas and um make you want to do the same thing you got to hit me up on instagram if you got any more in-depth questions i will be more than willing to answer anything you guys need um hit uh check out the instagram for the actual um proxy alignment uh app uh that will be on there as well i'm going to do more research on that get the actual name get some screenshots for you guys it is available on the app store and um google store as well so 100 available to any of your main phones i don't even know if they make windows phones if they do anymore at least if they do i don't know if it's on that store but hey it's on apple and android and it's totally worth it for anything you really want to do to your car um and it's just awesome so i hope you guys enjoyed this one and until the next one guys thank you so much for checking us out peace